about multi-channel network. So some of you guys, if you're creators here on YouTube, you might already know what a multi-channel network is. They act as um, managers for a lot of the big YouTubers. Um, I don't consider myself to be big YouTubers. I'd say I'm kind of like getting there. <laughs> Or maybe I am bigger, it depends on your perspective, but whatever, nobody's really bigger. We're all just creating. It's not, you know, most of the time it's this numbers game. But yes, basically, multi channel networks act as managers. They take a certain percentage of the earnings from the AdSense. All the ads that play, they take a certain percentage of that revenue um, from each partner. And it's like all of the revenue for all of these ads that play on all of these different channels, they are rolled into that network CMS. Basically, um, a network, there might be a network for like gamers, a network where there's like beauty, fashion, but some of them actually have like more of a wider um, group of genres under their network. So, the first time I heard about networks, um, I was just kind of keeping up with other naturals on YouTube and I joined this network two years ago because a lot of other YouTubers that were like big in the natural hair community you could see on some of their banners that they were with a particular network so I was looking at that network like wow this person is under that network this person is under that network and so all of a sudden I'm like what are these networks and why am I not in one first network was Alchemy Networks a lot of other big natural hair YouTubers were under Alchemy and that was one of the major reasons why I joined. No other reason. Like I didn't really know if they could really help me, but I figured since so many other people that I admired were under their network, that I should join their network. <laughs> I know, that's, it sounded like a good idea at the time. I joined their network, uh, didn't work out, um, I, I don't even know, that, that whole situation was just crazy, it was just like, then afterwards, then you feel like you made the biggest mistake, like, oh my gosh, why did I join this network? They're not doing anything, like, oh my goodness. So after that, I was a little cautious about joining another network. And this is where, this is where the second network comes in, which um, I joined last year. So I'm gonna tell you guys that story. So about a year ago, about a year ago, about a year ago, um, I was approached at a party to join um, a certain particular network and all the people that worked for the network were really nice people and they told me a lot of things, they told me that um, I could be doing so many, I could be doing so much more for my channel that my channel could really grow more if I started implementing these strategies, implementing certain strategies that I had been using. Around that time I had just left Alchemy. And not by choice, they kind of just released me, which was really good because I wanted to be released. But I was a little iffy about networks because that wasn't a good experience. It wasn't a good experience, and I don't know if you guys know this, a lot of other naturals, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of other bigger naturals had joined that network, and then it turns out that that network weren't really keeping the promises that they said, and which, as you will see later on when I start talking, guys, it's not about what they say, it's about what's in the contract. So they actually ended up releasing me and I was happy about that because I it didn't look like we were on the same page as far as what they could help me with and what they were trying to do as a network so I was happy to re-release and I was a little cautious about joining a new network because I'm thinking what do I even need a network for but I met someone at a party and you know they told me about a lot of great things or they told me that I could be doing more and so um, basically just for me, and this is my mistake, based on you know how nice they were, I they sent me a contract, I signed the contract, and I don't even I know that I didn't really read the contract because I just looked back at it like not too long ago, and I was like, oh, what, what is this? You know, I saw a lot of new things, and I was like, why, why would I not read the contract when I signed it? You know, I'm thinking like. Of course I should have read the contract. What is wrong with me? And so I ended up joining this network and um, I thought that if I wanted, if I was unhappy with what they were doing or how they were helping me grow or if they weren't really helping me grow, that I could just tell them 
and I could just be released. But that is not the case. So apparently, um, I look at the contract and it says that, you know, basically the year, the year term, it, it automatically renews. And then only after the second year will I really have the option to leave if I want to. Now, that kind of made me upset, guys. <laughs> I mean, because I was so set on just leaving this network and starting over by myself, network free. And then when I finally made contact with them and they were like, well, your contract says, and then I was like, Kashir, why didn't you read the contract? Why didn't you, why didn't you read the contract? What's wrong with you? So what you guys saw kind of on the front end of my YouTube channel is that I, I had basically made all my videos private for a minute. And I was thinking about just starting a new channel like whatever, they're not going to leave me even, I mean they're not going to release me even though I'm not happy, I don't think you guys are really helping me or my channel grow, I want to leave, you guys aren't letting me leave so I'm just going to do my own thing, I'm going to start another channel. But <laughs> that was kind of a rush decision made out of like frustration and then I was thinking like why would I start a whole new channel when I built this channel up? So. I just decided to ride this year out and even though I'm not happy with the situation and the most important thing that I realized and this is what you really need to make sure you understand about networks is it's not really about what they say they can do for you it's more so about what your contract says that they have to do for you and after really looking at my contract I realized that it doesn't really say that they have to do anything I mean, the stuff that they're doing, that they have done, which is like provide me with, you know, music, which YouTube now provides you with music, but they provide you with like a special music library so you don't have to worry about um, buying music. But like I said, YouTube now does that. Um, they provide me with some information about things I could be doing, but all of that is also in the YouTube playbook, which you can easily get. You can find it. Um, there's a creator space for YouTube out here. Um, it's called YouTube Space LA and whatever I just feel like a lot of the things that you know they're supposedly helping me with I can I don't like I could get elsewhere all the growth that I've gotten I feel like I've gotten it myself to be honest with you and you know it's like my subscriber growth has been consistent with my subscriber growth before I even joined the network so to me I'm thinking like you you couldn't even you know the network you they can't even prove to me how much of my channel's growth that can be attributed to them or attributed to something that they've done for me. So, you know, in that case, I'm just thinking like, so you can't really prove that you've helped me grow. It doesn't say in my contract that you have to help me grow or that you, you will do this, you will do that. It doesn't say any of that in the contract, but what it does say, it tells you what the split's going to be, how much they're going to take. It tells you about a whole bunch of other stuff that what basically what you are allowing them to do as far as your channel and how they sell ads on your channel all that it, it covers them for whatever they want to do what it doesn't cover is it doesn't say that they have to do anything it doesn't tell you we will do this we will do that and none of that is in writing so what I've learned <laughs> is that honestly you you don't really need a network to grow channels were growing before networks were even on youtube and before you but if you if you really really want to join a network maybe say for instance for like the music perks you can get um uh, free access to like music libraries just make sure you look at the contract one thing that you want to make sure is you want to see how easy it is to get out of the contract and say after a year you're not happy um, I personally love one-year contracts and that's what I thought I was signing but because I didn't read the contract thoroughly because it kind of has tricky language and sometimes contract legal contracts will do that um, you know I thought it was a one-year contract turns out it's a two-year contract and all of that kind of made me upset but then I realized like one I really should have took it more seriously and really read what it says. So hopefully, if you are thinking about joining a network, just really make sure that you read that contract. 
And also you can revise the contract and send it back to them, see if they agree to the, the terms that you have changed, like as far as how easy it is for you to get out. I feel like, honestly, if you are unhappy with the network and they're taking a certain percentage of your revenue, then, I mean, it should be easy for you to leave. I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> Why would you want to hold someone in a contract when they're not happy with your services? I don't get that. So it's important to know that you can adjust, revise, add stuff to your contract to make sure it's what you want. Um, really read it. Make sure you, you understand everything that's in that contract. And like I said, I think it's best to do one-year contracts like you, one year is a good enough time to to see if you'll you'll be happy with them, to see if you'll like them. I, that's why, you know, like I said, I was like, why is this a two-year contract? Because it, even when they talked to me, I was still under the impression that it was a one-year contract. One of the ladies that I talked to even said that it was a one-year contract. But like I said, guys, it's not about what they say. It's about what is on the contract. And so... That was pretty much a, frustra a frustrating situation for me, wanting to kind of do whatever I wanted to do with my channel minus the network, but still having to be stuck with them for another year. And I know a lot of people, they see other big YouTubers with networks and then they feel like, oh, let me join that network. I'm telling you now, guys, a lot of these networks, sometimes you won't even have like a, a direct person to talk to. So just do your homework, even ask other people under that network if they're happy look google it first like see if how many people are trying to get out of that network that they can't because i looked into all of this and there's a bunch of people trying to get out of networks that they sign trying to get out of contracts that they sign and they can't so do your research first don't just join a network i learned a lot um as you guys saw um i, I decided i'm going to keep this channel as my hair channel and i have Kashir tv that's going to be comedy skits and my commentary on different events and whatever I want to talk about. And then outside the Candom Life, that's going to be Mark and I personal vlog channel. We're going to be showing us inside our home, inside our lives, inside our world. That is pretty much where I am right now. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I know some of you guys that are up there or who have, if you're over at the thousand mark as far as subscribers or you have a lot more, you're probably thinking like, should I join a network? And I just, you know, I personally don't think it's worth it. I feel like you can grow on your own and you can keep all of the revenue that you have, that you make for yourself. You got to understand that like YouTube takes 45% of any earnings that you make already. There's, your split between YouTube and you as a creator is almost 50%. So joining a network, they're going to take a percentage too. Like, if you're going to be giving away a good chunk of that that revenue, you want to make sure that they're actually doing something great for it. Like, otherwise, what is the point? So that is my that is my rant slash advice for any YouTubers who, if you're thinking about joining a network. Um, like I said, I'm not happy with mine. I really, really wish that they would just release me. And I just, yes, yeah, so you guys can find out what network I'm with if you really wanted to. It's really easy, but I don't want to put them out there or, you know, say anything bad about them or say their names in this video. So, but yes, that's my opinion. And if, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'm free to answer any further questions about these YouTube networks. Go so check out all my new amazing, fantabulous designs at wildheartbliss.com y'all I got so many crazy new pieces like also this shirt was made for me by Charisma for you she's an amazing YouTuber she's also an amazing designer so I'm gonna put her information in the description box go check her out this shirt is the bomb.com alright guys thank you so much for watching I hope this video was super helpful peace out